Chapter 2. Hearing a Secret When Mary arrived at Misselthwaite Manor, she was shown to a large, gloomy room with portraits of hunters and dogs hanging on the walls. Outside her window, she could see a great stretch of land that seemed to have no trees on it, and looked rather like an endless purple sea. That is the moor, explained a young housemaid. Do you like it? Mary stared at the housemaid, then turned back to the window. No, she replied coldly. I hate it. Martha, the housemaid, continued tidying up Mary's room and unpacking her things. If she noticed Mary's rude tone, she didn't show it. She went on cheerfully polishing the furniture and tending to the fire in the fireplace. Well, I just love it, she told Mary. It's covered with sweet-smelling things and grows lovely in the spring. I wouldn't live away from the moor for anything. The name's Martha, she added. Mary scoffed at her strange new servant. Back in India, servants weren't anything like Martha. They did not talk to their masters as if they were their equals. They bowed and called them master and sir. Are you going to dress me? Mary asked Martha, not bothering to introduce herself. Martha seemed surprised. Can't you dress yourself? she asked. No, Mary answered impatiently. I never have in my whole life. My eye addressed me, of course. Martha threw up her hands. Well, she said with a laugh, it's time you learned. Mary grew angry at once. I will not be laughed at by a servant, she cried. Martha stared at Mary in disbelief. The poor girl, she thought. No father, no mother, no brothers or sisters. She must be so lonely. Martha didn't know what it was to be lonely. She had twelve brothers and sisters. She decided to ignore Mary's rude behavior. Hopefully, Martha thought, she would become friendlier in time. Martha poured Mary some tea and began to talk about her brothers and sisters, especially about her younger brother, Dickon. Although Mary was in a foul mood and pretended not to listen, she couldn't help but smile at Martha's funny stories. Martha said that Dickon was one of the friendliest, happiest people she knew. He knew how to make friends with the animals on the moor. Dickon had even befriended a wild pony, and now the pony followed Dickon around wherever he went. Mary thought she might like to see that, She'd never seen a boy who made friends with animals. Soon, she was listening very closely to Martha and even laughing out loud at times. When Martha was finished cleaning Mary's room, she told Mary to go off to play. But who will go with me? Mary asked. You'll go by yourself, Martha answered. You'll have to learn how to play by yourself, like Dickon. That's how he made friends with that pony. He's even made friends with the sheep and birds on the moor, that Dickon. All the talk about Dickon made Mary more curious than ever to meet him. You'll meet him some day, Martha assured her. She helped Mary put on her coat and hat and showed her through the door. If you go around that way, Martha said, you'll find the gardens. There are lots of flowers in the summertime, but it's pretty dead now. She hesitated for a second. One of the gardens is locked up, so you won't be able to see it. No one has seen it in ten years. Why? Mary asked. Martha bit her lip, wondering if she should tell Mary about the locked garden. She lowered her voice and explained that Lord Craven had the garden shut up immediately after his wife died. Mary's eyes widened. He's locked the door and buried the key in the ground, Martha added. Then she realized she said more than enough. She quickly ushered Mary out the door.